Hey guys, in our previous video, we went through modifying our form submission to actually go to another page once uh, data was submitted in the form and to display the data being submitted. So just as a quick recap, we're just going to quickly fill out this form and I'm just going to use values that were there before to expedite that process. And then when I click submit, we go to the next page where everything that we just filled out is there on display. Now, we looked at using one an action and two the method get. And the get method actually puts all of the values being submitted in the form right there in the URL in plain sight. You don't want that. If you're dealing with sensitive information, you don't want that the URL will be a source for anybody who has malicious intentions to just come and get the data. It shouldn't be that simple. So for certain applications yes it's fine but then when you're dealing with sensitive data you want to use another method which is called post and that is what we will be looking at today now get and post are very 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 similar so the changes that we need to make to our form and to our action page will be very very minimal now the first change that we would make is to change the method so we did say get what we want to say this time is post and that is half of the work complete right there. So just by changing the method from get to post, the form behavior will be entirely different. And I'll show you. Now you notice that there is a difference. So I'm getting an error here, and it is saying that I have undefined indexes and other things. So it's looking for the values that should be there and it's not finding it. Also, you'd notice that my URL does not pass over any values. So then you're probably wondering, okay, where are the values? So if we go back to our action page, which was success.php, we would have written quite a bit of code. We, we took this from Bootstrap site to just get that card. And what we were doing was echoing get and each index of the get. So what happens is that because we're not passing over the values in the get method anymore, the super variable for get is not getting any values. That's that's pretty much what's happening here. So that is why we're getting these errors that undefined index first name because the get super variable is looking for some value with the index first name same with last name and every other one. So this now is a way to introduce the other super variable which works with the post method and that one is post. It's that simple. So I'm going to leave this code. I'm actually just going to comment out this code or at least most of this code because I have to comment out the PHP manually. So I'm just going to comment it out and I'm going to leave a notice above it to, so we all know what this code was for. All right, so I just wrote this little guide to say that this prints of values that were passed to the action page using method equals get so that we know that that's what this section of code was for. However, I'm going to duplicate this section of code. I'm just going to make some modifications. Like I said, get and post are very, very similar. And the big difference is that instead of saying get, I am going to say dollar sign underscore post. And that is half of the work completed. So I'm just going to leave it with first name and then I am going to go back. Now, another thing is that because the, the values are not here in the URL, it, it kind of does it in the background. So it's like it has to fake a retransmission or resubmission if you try to refresh the action page, all right? So when I continue, you notice now that, okay, in the midst of the noise, you see the word Mary, and that's because the post, post super variable is actually seeing a value called first name. It's, so it works in the same way as the get. So if you understand how the get works, literally it's just changing the method from get to post and where you would have said get, you say post. That's the major difference. But then I want us to appreciate the fact that the behavior is also different because now we don't have that query string. We don't have that question mark with all of the values like we saw with the get, all right? So one, when we post data, it happens in the background. So the sensitive data or potentially sensitive data is not being passed in the URL as it was with the get. However, it 
as much as it is obscured from the user's eyes, we, the developers, know exactly what is happening because we know we are the ones pulling the strings. So I'm just going to go ahead and change all of these get references into post. And then I'm going to refresh the page, which is going to ask me if I want to, you know, it's going to say the page I'm looking for had some information. Do I want to resubmit? All right. So that's what Chrome is asking. So I'm just going to click continue and do that and we'll snap right back to normal. So all of the data that I just passed in the form is now there. It is there are no more errors, but notice one, no data is being passed in the URL. However, we are able to access it in the back end nonetheless. So I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to just go back to the form and I'm going to submit a brand new record. So I'm going to make up a new person, Agnes Walters and and at the end of this exercise, we're going to fix this date picker. And then this person is a software developer and she's awalters at gmail.com. All right, that's not a proper email address. And the number is one through nine, all right? And then when we submit, note, nothing in the URL. The URL is clean, clean as a whistle. However, all of her data is there for display. So once again, that is because we're now using the post method. Now I did say just now that we're going to fix the day picker and let's do that together now. So I'm going to go to the jQuery UI references for the date picker and I'm going to see what options are available. So I go to the website, I find date picker and then I'm going to see over here if they have any adjustments or custom, custom ways to display the date picker that is more conducive to my user base. All right, and I found the one, it's display month and year menus. So you, you click on the example and you see that it allows you to select the month, select the year, and then select the date. And that's much better than the one we had previously, which is the default one, where if I was born in 1950, I would have to click <laughs> that, that's not practical, all right? So now we want to modify it. So I'm going to look at the example code to see what it is that makes that one different. And then the major difference that I'm spotting here is in the function. So we know we call date picker, but what we did was call date picker and open and close brace. What they're doing is passing in some values here. So I'm just going to take those values because that's all I really need because I have the rest of the code. So they want to copy all of this and replace what's in here, or you just copy the relevant part and replace. So I'm just copying the relevant part. And then I'll go back to my code where my date picker is defined, which the function was being called in my footer file. And I'm going to just modify it with the new values. All right, and just spend some time fixing my indentation. All right. And so my date picker now has some parameters being passed in. Okay, so this is what your code needs to look like if, if you have the same concern that I do. So when I go back and I refresh my page and I reload my date picker, now it looks like a more user-friendly way to allow my users to, uh, to select their dates. So I can now comfortably scroll and then you see it's limiting which year. So that's another adjustment that we probably want to make. So back to our code, I'm going to add one more attribute and this one will set the year range. And the attribute is literally year range and then colon. So I'm just following the same um, pattern as the previous ones. And then the value for this could be, I think it's negative 100 and colon plus zero. All right, I'm going to save that and see what it looks like. And when I reload and take a look at the years available to me in this dropdown, I see I have up to 2019 and as far back as 100 years. So let me just explain that when I set year range and I said minus 100 colon plus zero, it means I can see up to 100 years ago 
but nothing beyond this year. All right, so this would be a moving target, of course, because next year, 100 years ago, would be 1920 as opposed to 1919 as it is now. And also plus zero would be 2020. So that is how you would go about setting the range of years that is available for selection from your calendar control. Ultimately, the goal of this tutorial video was to help us to understand how we can submit data from a form to the other page using the post method. So you already have the get and you still have the code, the reference code above. And now we know how to do it with post and comparably each one has its own purpose. Each one has its advantages. Just use them wisely.